Hey, good morning. Um, just uh, had a couple of thoughts on my mind for some time now. I've written a blog post about uh, the things I'm going to share, but it's been a while and I thought I may as well do the video. At least I like people's videos because I, when I'm working or driving or whatever, I can listen instead of have to read uh, blogs. So that's kind of one reason I've recorded the resort of videos and it's easier to do them instead of sit down and <laughs> write a blog post. But um, anyways, we had the opportunity to be with Ammon last week and uh, Ammon Bundy, he's running for governor in Idaho and he is, he was my diesel mechanic when I lived in Middleton a year and a half ago and uh, came to really appreciate him and love him. Um, so he was up here, just he's going around the state speaking to people, kind of sharing who he is and what he stands for. And, and uh, so I just wanted to add my witness that uh, I feel like he is a man of God and he's seeking to protect the Constitution because the Constitution protects us and our liberties. Um, when he was my mechanic, we had hours and hours of discussions, uh, similar battles we were facing. And... Uh, I wanted to shed some light on, well, you know, that's the wrong way to say it. Not me shed some light. Hopefully the spirit will shed some light on some things. But I, I think it's really clear that the Constitution is the law of the land and it protects us from tyrants and from unrighteous dominion, basically, in gospel terms. And it protects the agency of all men because God is no respecter of persons. He loves you, he loves me, he loves the guy that's an <clears throat> everyday um, blue-collar worker, everyday white-collar worker, people in positions of authority in this world, people in positions of no authority. And uh, so men of God that were raised up were told in the Doctrine and Covenants by God himself to create the Constitution have, uh, have understood these principles and the power of agency and the power of freedom and liberty to choose to become like God or not, and to choose to take a parcel of land, like the Abrahamic Covenant gives the righteous, to take a parcel of land and make it better, to be a good steward over it, to have the gospel of Jesus Christ, to share it, um, to choose to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, or choose not to believe, or choose to believe portions of it, or choose to not believe in God, the one who's giving them their life and breath, he gives them the freedom to reject him. And so that's what that great document does. Is it protects our liberties. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. In the Federalist Papers, um, we learn that the intent of the, fa the Founding Fathers was pursuit of happiness meant property. Uh, pursuit of property. Because all throughout time, property was by the head king or chief magistrate on the ca in the castle on the hill, right? And all his serfs did his work for him and those types of things, but America was the opportunity to have your own parcel land to, by the sweat of your brow, um, create a living and uh, improve your circumstances, improve your opportunities for you and your children, <clears throat> for your seed. Another blessing in the Abrahamic covenant. Um, so politically, <clears throat> laws were put in place to protect men and women from uh, unrighteous dominion. And Spiritually, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have the scriptures, the word of God. And like Jesus said, whosoever treasures up my word shall not be deceived. We have the word of God to protect us from unrighteous dominion. And so as we're seeing people just completely bow to government, and whatever the government says, it must be for our well-being. If they say something is safe and effective, then wow, it's definitely safe and effective, and we can trust men. Um, because they have positions of authority or they have a, a title behind their name or in front of their name. But uh, that's not the way things work. The way things work is we have our freedom to choose what we believe, what research we do, um, the Spirit of the Lord within us. And so we have to become familiar with the Word of God. Uh, we have to become familiar with the Constitution. We have to become familiar with the Scriptures. And that takes work. There's a phrase in Isaiah, and it's quoted in the Book of Mormon, where he's quoting Isaiah that says, uh, for lack of knowledge, the people are in bondage uh, to that effect. 
and I found myself in that same place. I mean, Ivan was here, he spent the night and that whole morning and to mid afternoon, we were discussing things and I just kept thinking, man, I am so in bondage. I don't understand the constitution as well as I need to. I need to start diving in to this great document so I can, so I know what my rights are and I can't just be pushed over and follow something that's uh, incorrect. And it takes work, right? And it's, I think that's, there's no mystery. It takes work to understand the constitution. It takes work to understand the scriptures. Um, it's unfortunate that we didn't spend 12 years of our elementary, middle school, and high school days learning the Constitution uh, the way it was meant to be taught. By, um, it was produced by God-fearing men. It should be taught by, in a God-fearing light. And, um, and so in public schools, that was not the case, definitely. But we have the opportunity to choose how we educate our kids. <laughs> we don't have to put them in public school. Um, and uh, so anyways, we, we can change that link. We can be the strong link that uh, starts teaching our children the, the laws of the land and the laws of the gospel. And unfortunately in our churches, the laws of the gospel have been polluted and rested. The scriptures are being rested or twisted to meet the agenda and the purposes of those in power. So as we use the laws that God's given us, the constitution, the scriptures, we can protect ourselves from unrighteous dominion and um, turn this thing around and... Uh, it does require work to study it. It does require work to live it. And uh, it takes more work to become familiar with the Spirit of the Lord instead of become familiar with the the cadence of the, the siren songs of those that are in positions of authority. There's a certain, a certain familiarity with their tune, with their vibration, with uh, the frequency at which they speak and share things and do things. Um, I was very much familiar with that. And... and um, so as I started becoming aware of some things, uh, it felt like darkness. And uh, I became aware later, uh, last night even, I was reading in Exodus 20. And it said when Moses went up on the mountain, he entered the darkness. He uh, went to the darkness where the Lord was. And I think that's the case. Uh, a lot of Joseph Smith's another example of that, right? Thick darkness gathered around him. It seemed to, to him for time as if he were doomed to sudden destruction. Um, but exerting all his power to call upon God, to deliver him out of the power of this enemy which held him bound. That's what, that's what delivered him. He called upon God. And I think that darkness is actually unfamiliarity with um, truth, some truths that have been blind, uh, kept back from us. We have had veils of unbelief, right? Section 93 says that traditions of our fathers and disobedience is what creates unbelief. And... Um, We've had these false traditions passed down, and so when we discover the truth about uh, polygamy, or the truth about blood atonement, or the truth about uh, follow the prophet, or the truth about uh, how funds are used with tithing funds, the truth, all these truths, and, and it's unfamiliar and it's uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable for the Israelites to go up and sanctify themselves as Moses had commanded, and God had commanded Moses to tell them to sanctify themselves to come up and see the face of God. That's not a comfortable proposition. Um, it's not comfortable to have to repent. It's not comfortable to look into your heart and see why you do the things you do. It's not comfortable for me all the time. And in fact, there's things as I look through my heart and my actions, it's frustrating, um, almost depressing because of some of the things that take me so much time to repent of. Because repentance means change. And to look to God, right? In the Old Testament, uh, shubar, shuber, however it is, is, is to look to God. The word for repentance in the Hebrew and uh, in the New, Te New Testament's uh, montaña, some, uh, montaneo, something like that, which means a change of heart, a change of mind, a new perspective. Those things are hard to do um, as you see the truth of who you are and, and change. But it's worth the effort, right, to sanctify ourselves because that's why we're here. And so it's darkness to them. It's darkness to the people that don't want that. Um, in John three nineteen to twenty one, we learn that um, when we come into the light, we see our, our darkness, and we and a lot of times we condemn the light because we don't want to change, or we don't want to change our thought processes. Right. So we just condemn those that are bringing things to light, or we condemn and call them names and try to destroy their character and uh, make up lies and rumors about them trying to get people not to listen to them to discredit them same thing politicians do right because because something is new to us or unfamiliar with us and we don't want to take the time to figure it out for ourselves and so what do we do just lash out and start trying to destroy the messenger um 
very much the natural man thing to do. And so as we receive new things, um, how important it is to study it out, compare it to the law or the word of God, politically or religiously, which is really all the same thing. I mean, we, to protect the liberties we have, we have to understand the gospel, but to, um, to protect the gospel, we have to know the constitution. And I'm so grateful for those that have done that. And I'm grateful for Ammon. Anyways, I uh, really encourage you to go to votebundy.com and see what he stands for and listen to his messages on YouTube. Um, I think you'll find that your spirit resonates with what he's saying. And, um, and, uh, and make it light by understanding more clearly what it is. And it'll become more and more familiar to you, less and less dark, more and more light, just like the gospel does as we take time to do that. Anyways, I'm very I'm imperfect, very um, not wanting to do these types of things. I love to share truth, but I uh, open myself up to uh, criticism because I'm very, very imperfect. But uh, hopefully this makes sense um, and feels right because I, I believe it's true. <laughs> I believe it's in the scriptures what I'm saying. and I could go through and open the scriptures to certain verses, but um, just I'll let you do that. That's the, the heavy lifting, right? And then the really, really heavy lifting is actually molding our characters into the, the likeness of Christ. So anyways, have a good one. Enjoy your Sabbath. See ya.